Cinema 5D's NAB show coverage. Sponsored by 16x9 Inc. The Blackbird Stabilizer. Genie Riggs. LCDVF, the viewfinder company. And the J Rod Store. Cinema 5D, the forum for DSLR filmmakers. My name is Doug Jensen. I'm a owner of Vortex Media, an independent production company in Rhode Island. I don't work for Sony, but Sony brings me in to work at the NAB show for them. I've been shooting with a pre-production version of the uh, NEX FS100, which is what we have here. So I, if you want to know anything about it, I'm one of the people that can tell you uh, about why I consider this camera the DSLR killer. Uh, if you like shooting with it, if you like the shallow depth of field cinematic look of a 7D or a D7000 or close to a 5D, not quite the same shallow depth of field as a 5D, but definitely a 7D, you can get it with a true camcorder design with all the features and functions that you'd expect to find in a professional video camcorder. Some of the differences between this and an SLR, such as the 7D, which I'm being shot with now, uh, is that I wouldn't have to use an external audio recording unit like I see hanging on your rig. I, could, I have two XLR inputs here on the uh, FS100 uh, with independent controls, audio level controls right on, outside the body with VU meters in the viewfinder. Imagine such an amazing thing. Um, I have headphone jacks so I can monitor my audio. I have a viewfinder here that can I can put my eye right up against without having to add a third party attachment. If I don't want to use the viewfinder, I can flip it up and use a beautiful three and a half inch LCD that can rotate to different angles. Uh, or I can snap this back down, or I can remove this whole unit and take it completely off. Some other advantages over a DSLR is that I've got Zebra now for helping with uh, set my exposure. I've got Peaky to help with focus. I've got time code settings. I can press a button and play back the last clip instantly. The image sensor size is optimized for video production. No more A, or base, who's, who can say no, but practically no rolling shutter, no more A, no a, a aliasing. It's the exact same sensor that's found in the more expensive F3. It's the exact same sensor. Digital processing behind the sensor is a little bit different, but the sensor itself is exactly the same. Shoots 24p, 30p, does up to 60 frames per second at full 1920 by 1080 with no image quality degradation or anything. It's full image resolution at 60 frames per second. Now, if recording on SD cards or memory sticks or a 128 gigabyte module that goes on the side, if that's not good enough for you, then you can also record the output from the HDMI output. And the HDMI output is recordable. It is 444 or 422 output out of the HDMI at 8-bit. You can record that to an external recorder if you require a uh, better signal than what can be captured on the internal cards themselves. Um, what else can I tell you about it? How much is it going to be? The uh, list price is 5800 When it comes out in a couple of months, I expect the street price to be maybe more around 5100 maybe 5000 So not too much more, you know, a couple thousand dollars more than a 7D, but it's ready to go as you take it out of the box. One more thing I'd like to mention about the camera is the lens mount. Now, the native lens mount is a Sony E-mount, which I don't think too many video professionals are going to have any E-mount lenses, so that's not what's important. What's important is that you can buy third-party adapters to mount just about any lens you can imagine that will cover a Super 35 image circle and mount that on the camera. The final thing I would like to say is thank you to, for, to Canon for spurring the 35 millimeter craze for getting us into this 35 millimeter cinematic look in affordable cameras. As I give Canon full credit where credit is due, that if it wasn't for Canon and the 5D, the 7D and those cameras, we would not have this camera from Sony today. So I give Canon full credit for creating the, the craze and, uh, and getting us to this level of quality. And I really hope that Canon takes this challenge from Sony and they come out with something new that ups the ante and then Sony can up the ante from there and maybe we'll have an F35 for a thousand dollars in a couple of years.